Hi guys, Olive here, here today with the next video in my ongoing Trash My Bookshelves fiction unhauling project. If you don't know what I mean by that, if you've never seen any of my videos that deal with this project, basically what I'm trying to do right now is reduce the number of fiction books that I currently own. When I first moved to Pittsburgh with my husband, kind of the way I learned my way around this city was going to library book sales and the different used bookstores in the Pittsburgh area. I also go to used bookstores and library book sales in other areas when I visit. So I was acquiring a huge book collection when I first moved here. And of course, as I started to get more and more into the book scene, but I was acquiring a lot of fiction books at the time because that's what I read more of at that point in my life. But now I've kind of gone back to my nonfiction roots. I'm much more of a nonfiction reader. So I'm left with all of these fiction books that I'm just not sure are entirely speaking to me anymore, but I am really scared to get rid of any books that might be really good that I might go on to enjoy. I've read so many books that I thought weren't going to be for me, and then they ended up being new favorites. So I'm just kind of scared of that. So I decided that I was going to basically crowdsource this project and that I would go through five of the shelves on this far bookcase where I keep my fiction books. I would go through those shelves, show you what the books are, get your opinions, and then decide whether or not I was going to keep those books based off of your feedback. Well, what I discovered in the very first shelves video is that there are always a handful of books that people just do not agree on. Some people love them, some people hate them. There's no consensus and there's no way of telling whether or not I would like them. So I decided that each shelf from that bookshelf, there are a total of five, I was going to make one video where I show you all of the books, tell you how I'm currently feeling about them, give you some time, a few weeks to give me all of your feedback in the comment section. And then I would make my decisions and whichever ones were still middling, whichever ones I couldn't make a decision about, I decided I would read a chapter or a handful of chapters, whatever got me up to 25 pages. I would sit down and read them in a try a chapter tag, and I would use that to make the final decisions about the books on that shelf. So here are the five books. Here, I'll show you. Here are the five books I'm going to be sampling today. I'm going to read a little bit from each of them off camera just because I'm not trying to kill my camera battery. And then I'll come back and give you my comments. I will start over here with this bad boy just because it's the one on top. So the book that I'm starting with is called Bellwether by Dennis Mahoney. Now, I didn't see any feedback from anyone in the comment section of the last video saying that they read it. This is a little bit more of an obscure book. I know there are people out there who have read it. I just didn't see them in my comments. And I am making kind of a rule with this project that I want to go off of your feedback and not Goodreads reviews and the like. I trust you all a lot more than I trust those reviews, because at least I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you and I have a lot in common. <laughs> I would assume that's why you're here watching me. So I do trust your feedback a lot more than people on Goodreads who I could have the opposite taste from. You just never know. But the feedback I did get about this book is that it's so beautiful, you have to at least try it. And I don't disagree. Because if you didn't see that second shelf's video, some of the most beautiful books I've ever seen in my life were on that shelf. And I unfortunately had to get rid of a lot of them because I just didn't think that they were worth taking up shelf space if I wasn't going to actually enjoy the book. But this one seems like I could enjoy it. It seems like it's kind of Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield-esque. And I really hope that there's a chance that I'll like this because I think getting rid of this work of art would absolutely break my heart. That rhymed. I'm going to go read 20 to 25 pages of this off camera, and then I'll be back with my comments. Okay, I'm back. That was really intriguing. I don't know what I was expecting from this book, but that wasn't what I was expecting at all. The early pages show Tom Orange, the main character, trying to save a drowning woman from a flooded river. Most of those early pages are kind of this action sequence of him trying to rescue her from the river, except the river that she's struggling in, it's not flooded with water. 
it's flooded with flowers. He does end up saving the woman, but she has selective amnesia. She doesn't fully remember who she is, which seems like a lie because she knows her first name is Molly. So he saved Molly from the river. It seems like we're also getting a little bit more information about this town that they're located in. It's this fantasy area. They're in a small town called Root. And the greater area is called Floria. And I believe it's set, I think it said 1763. Seems like a rainstorm is rolling in right now, which will set me up nicely for my next reading session. But just to close this out here, this is giving me Skyrim meets Magical Forest kind of vibes, which is really intriguing. I liked the writing well enough. I thought everything flowed pretty well ironically enough, given that it's talking about a flooded river. But that actually reminds me of something I wanted to say about this book. I wish he was doing a little bit more showing rather than telling. I felt like he was doing a lot of the telling and less of the showing, which I mean, a river overflowing with flowers, that's the perfect place to use beautiful language to conjure that image in the reader's mind. But he wasn't really doing that. However, I am really interested in this book. I think it's something I would enjoy reading. So I think I'm going to keep this. It just started pouring down rain. So let me quickly introduce this next book so I can listen to the rain while I enjoy my pages. So the next book from Shelf 2 that I'm going to sample is A Guide for the Perplexed by Dara Horn. This is yet another one that I just didn't get enough feedback on. One person did say that they had read another work of fiction of hers and they really enjoyed it. But I don't think anyone commented who had read this one in particular. I have always had a really good feeling about Dara Horn's work. She has an essay collection coming out later this year that I have an arc of. I've already sampled a little bit from it and I really like it. But I know that I can end up feeling drastically differently about an author's fiction than I feel about their nonfiction. So I don't know if I'm going to like this one. So I'm going to go quickly read these pages and enjoy the sounds of the rain. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I think the rain is done, maybe for the day, or maybe just for now, because it's looking like it's cleared up a little bit. So hopefully the lighting in this video will be back to normal. Although I very much enjoyed listening to the rain while I was reading these pages. There wasn't any real clear place to stop within the 20 to 25 page range. So I just kind of stopped reading on page 25, which bummed me out. I wanted to keep reading, which is always a good sign. This book has at least a dual narrative, two different timelines. There may be more than that, but that's just what I was introduced to in the first 25 pages. And I talked about this a little bit in the last Try a Chapter tag I did, because one of the books did something similar. I really like when an author gives me some time to get used to one of them before introducing the other. I like to feel like I have a grasp on what's going on before the next one is introduced. So I wasn't the biggest fan of that in this book, but it didn't really bother me because there wasn't too much introduced in the first timeline. Basically, the first timeline, it's the modern day and there's this software engineer named Josephine which I love that name, by the way. And in her younger years, she was fairly young when she developed this data mining software. And it basically mines data from your day to day life using the devices around you. So highly realistic. In other words, we get to see what this software is capable of when Josephine's young daughter, she's six, her shoes go missing. And so Josephine goes into the app and types in her daughter's name and shoes. And it shows her a video that was taken passively without any prompting of her daughter's shoes falling off in the car. And then the other narrative is set in 1896. There's this Cambridge professor named Solomon who's being approached by this set of very eccentric, but very learned and very accomplished twins. They speak all of these different languages and they also have a knack for finding books and documents that supposedly don't exist. They've done it before and now they're doing it again and they're presenting him with the manuscript. In these early pages, there was a lot of talk about biblical texts, which I'm assuming continues throughout the book because there's this manuscript and I'm sure we're going to learn more about it. I will say that that's a little bit intimidating for someone like me. That is not my area of expertise. It's not even necessarily my area of interest. 
So I don't know exactly if I'll go on to love this, but I do think there's every chance that I'll really like it. It honestly reminded me a lot of the early pages of People of the Book, which is a book I decided to keep in the last try a chapter tag. So I think I'm also going to keep this one. I feel good about that. And maybe I'll review it at the same time as People of the Book. That would be very fitting. So we're two for two so far. I should note that there isn't really a number of books I'm looking to get rid of, like in general or from each shelf or in each one of these tag videos. It's not like I'm saying to myself, I can only keep two out of the five. If I like all of these, then I'll keep them. If there's a whole shelf that I want to keep, I'll do that too. I want to just get rid of books I don't think I'm going to enjoy, whatever that looks like, whatever number. I don't have any number in mind. So well, I guess we'll see what happens with the remaining three books. Maybe they'll all be good. But the next one I'm going to sample is The Bastard of Istanbul by Alif Shafak. Now, I was pretty certain I was going to get rid of this one. It was actually sitting on my preliminary to get rid of pile, how I thought everything was going to work out. And then I move things around as I get the feedback. But I didn't think I was going to like this one because another one of her books, The Architect's Apprentice, I read that and I just wasn't really impressed by it. I didn't really like it, but I also didn't dislike it. It was just kind of one of those meh books. There wasn't really anything special about it. But then I read your comments and a number of you said that this book is nothing like The Architect's Apprentice. And you urged me to give it a try. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Hi again. So I stopped on page 22 of The Bastard of Istanbul because there wasn't a clear place to stop around 25 pages. So I just decided to go within the 20 to 25 range. I read 22 pages of this. And what's happening in those pages is that there's a young woman in Istanbul. I'm not sure if it said where we are time wise. If it did, I completely missed that. But there's a young woman fighting a rainstorm in July very appropriate considering what happened earlier in this video, but she's fighting the rain. She's fighting the traffic because of the rain and also some street harassment in order to get to a gynecologist's appointment. She's late for an appointment, but when she gets to the office, we find out that she's trying to terminate a pregnancy. But when they actually take her to terminate the pregnancy, she's thrashing, she's yelling, they can't perform the procedure. So we find out that she's going to have this child who she is convinced is a daughter. I will say that that's not a lot for 22 pages, just in my personal opinion. And I just got done reading A Guide for the Perplexed, and I know that that was 25 pages that I read, and this was only 22. I know three pages can make a difference, but they are very similar in terms of the page count. And I feel like A Guide for the Perplexed, Dara Horn, did so much more with that time, whereas it felt like these 22 pages, it was just one extended scene. And it actually reminded me of the frustration I was feeling when I was reading The Architect's Apprentice. She does have a beautiful way of saying things, but she just kind of goes on and on about it. And I remember feeling when I was reading The Architect's Apprentice, like, can you just get back to the story? Like, can we please focus on the story? Can you please just say what you want to say so that I can find out what happens next? I'm getting the feeling that that's just her writing style. And it seems like I don't get along with it. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. I'm just very much thinking that it's not for me. So I may change my mind in the future. I might be a totally different kind of reader in the future. I never say never. I have learned not to. So I can always get her books out from the library. There are always ebooks. So if I want to try her books in the future, I can do that. But for now, this is going to go because I want the shelf space. All right, these last two books that I'm going to be reading from in this tag are by far the ones I got the most feedback on. And it was pretty much split down the middle with both books. Some people were rooting for them, they loved them, some people were rooting against them, and told me to just get rid of them. So of course, I have no idea what to think. So I'm actually super curious to see how I feel about these books. The first one is Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller. Some people said they really liked this book. Other people said they found it boring. But a number of people did say that they felt I would really like it. They felt confident that I would enjoy it. One person actually said that they themselves found it boring, but that they thought I would really like it. Which should I be insulted by that? I'm totally kidding. I know what that person meant by that. I do tend to like books that 
are a little bit more nuanced, that have some subtlety to them. It's why I'm such a big Lily King fan. So I know what you mean by that. But yeah, I can take books that other people find boring. As long as the author is doing something to further the story, as you could probably tell from my reaction to The Bastard of Istanbul, as long as there is a semblance of story and as long as I feel like that's being prioritized, I don't care if a book is slow. I don't care if it's really cerebral. I don't care if there's a lot going on internally within these characters and I have to guess at it. I know some people find that kind of thing boring. I eat it up personally. So I do feel pretty confident that I'm going to like this, but I'm still going to give it a try and make sure. So I'll be back. Okay, well, that read really quickly. I technically read three chapters of this, which was 20 something pages, but they decided to put whole blank pages in between chapters. So I'm not positive that it was actually 20 something pages. It was probably more like maybe 17 or 18. But I think I got the gist of this book. When it starts, there is a man who thinks he sees his wife and she's been missing for over 11, almost 12 years. He thinks he sees her, so he's trying to chase her down, but he ends up falling off the promenade in this area, which very much worries his two daughters, understandably. I definitely got the impression from these early pages that those two daughters could not be more different from one another. One of them seems more composed and put together. She doesn't believe that their father saw their mother, but then the other one is more scattered, but she does believe their father when he says that he saw their mother. And we also find out that their father wrote a famous novel. And then in the last section that I read from this book, it has one of the infamous letters that the missing wife Ingrid wrote to her husband while she was still living there before she disappeared. She for years had been writing letters to him saying all the things she couldn't say in the marriage and then she hid them in books around the house. I guess no one reads those books if no one found one of those letters in almost 12 years. But the letter that we get to read was dated 1992. And she's talking about when she first met the man who would go on to become her husband. Apparently, he was her creative writing instructor. I'm definitely interested now. I mean, I want to know more about why the wife left. It seems like this husband is good at spinning stories in every sense of that term. So I'm wondering what he was doing or how she was feeling. So I love books with good family secrets. I liked the writing in here. And a lot of you seem very confident that I will go on to really like this book. And that's personally good enough for me. So this one's going to stay. But now finally, the last book that I'm going to be sampling in this video is a dark one probably good that it looks like more rain is coming in. But this book was probably the most disagreed upon book from the comment section of that last video. It's Melmoth by Sarah Perry. Some of you said that you loved this book, you loved the atmosphere, you actually liked it more than the Essex Serpent, while other people said it's not as good as the Essex Serpent, it was disappointing. Other books do the moody, gothic, atmospheric thing a whole lot better. So I don't know what to think. This was actually the first book that I knew was going to have to be in this tag because there was so much disagreement. And there was a lot of disagreement about swimming lessons too, but I just generally felt more confident about that one, especially because a lot of you were saying that you thought it would be my kind of thing. I didn't get quite as much of that when it came to this book. So I do think this one is a 50-50 shot. I have known that I've needed to try this book for myself basically since right after I posted that video. So this has been a long time coming. Let's see. Okay, back once again for the final time. I read up until page 20 of Melmoth by Sarah Perry. And not because there was any kind of break there. I just wanted to stop reading after I had read my 20 pages. I did not like this. This whole book starts off with a letter from one man to another. It's a letter of warning. It's written to a man named Carol. I think that's the right way to pronounce that. I did look it up, but I hope I got that right. But the letter is asking for forgiveness for what we don't know yet. And it also keeps mentioning a she. Then we're introduced to a perfectly ordinary English woman named Helen who lives in Prague where this is all taking place. She's lived there for about 20 years. She works as a translator, I think just for businesses, for corporations, but she's friends with Carol. I still hope that name is being pronounced correctly. And we also meet the woman who I think is his wife, Thea, 
which I love that name. That's my cat's name. I hope she doesn't come running now that she heard me say that. But anyway, Carol is telling Helen all about this letter and she doesn't really believe that there's any danger. She's skeptical about it in general. And that's about all I got from this book plot wise. I am sure that there were things that I was missing, but I kept getting stuck on the writing in this book. It felt so stiff and the dialogue felt completely unnatural. It read like this book was originally written in a different language, and then you just put it right through Google Translate, and this is the English that it spit back at you. It just didn't feel like anyone would actually talk this way. And we're told that the section that I read took place in 2016. That was only five years ago. I was there for that, and no one talks like this. I don't remember the dialogue bothering me when I was reading The Essex Serpent, but then again, I do think that book was set in the Victorian era or sometime in the past. So maybe it didn't read to me as unnatural because of the time period. But if you're going to tell me that something takes place in 2016, then people need to talk like they're in 2016. So this is another one that's going to go. Again, if I ever change my mind in the future, there's always the library, there are always ebooks. I'm actually much preferring reading on ebook these days anyway. So I can try this one again in the future if the mood ever strikes me. But for right now, I want this one to go. So the final results are in. I'm going to be keeping Bellwether by Dennis Mahoney, Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller, and A Guide for the Perplexed by Dara Horn. And I am getting rid of The Bastard of Istanbul by Alif Shafak and Melmoth by Sarah Perry. A lot of you have asked me questions about how I'm going to be keeping you updated about this project. And while I don't personally want to sit down and make a video and show you which books I'm keeping, which ones I'm getting rid of after each shelf, that sounds very repetitive. It doesn't sound like something enjoyable for me to make or for you to watch. I don't want to do that, but also I can't do one at the very end of the project because that's a lot of books and I'm also getting rid of a lot of them as I go along so they're not swallowing me in this reading room. And also the ones I'm keeping, I'm going to be reading hopefully as the months go on. That's another part of this project that I want to read the books that I keep so that I can also get rid of those if I don't want to reread them. So it's a little bit tricky, but what I landed on is that after the final try a chapter tag, I will show you the books that remain on my shelf. I'm also going to be doing a big reorganization project and I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour. So you will get to see the ones that stay. And then the ones that I'm getting rid of, what I decided to do was after each shelf, I would take all the books I'm getting rid of, just the ones I don't want anymore, and the ones that didn't make the cut in the try a chapter tag. I take a picture for my Instagram and I put it up over there. So that picture is up right now. If you go over and check it out, leave me a comment with a hedgehog emoji to let me know that you came from this video and also because hedgehogs are adorable. So that's all for today's video and that is officially a wrap for shelf number two. I'll be moving on to shelf number three here very shortly. This project is really moving along nicely. I have already cleared up so much space on this bookshelf. I've put other books there so it doesn't look so barren, but trust me, there is so much extra shelf space. There is so much more room for me to work with when I do my big reorganization project in the fall, which I cannot wait for. But thank you all so much for continuing to help me out with this. This has been such a nice, productive, positive thing in my life right now when other things in my life are very, very stressful. So again, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch, to comment, to let me know what you think. It's really cool having you all involved in this with me. So thank you again. And if you have any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Again, if you want to see the picture of all the books I'm getting rid of, head on over to my Instagram, which is linked in the description box below, along with everywhere else you can find me, including Goodreads. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>